Greetings, thing. Just let me close the door. Uh, I guess I should give you the date, eh? It is Monday, April 27th, 1992. Uh, hello. There. 1.02 p.m. I just put the uh, House of Commons on. And uh, I'm working on the titles for this very video letter. Namely, Video Letters to Jason 10. I mentioned earlier if uh, you have any other questions about how I did this title sequence uh, to let me know. I got to thinking, well, you're probably going to ask anyway, so I might as well just show you in this video letter, you know, I mean, it's appropriate. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to show you right now. Recognize that guy? Recognize him? Yes, that's right, Jason. That's you. That's a scene from uh, Jason's video letter one, which is going to be the second clip in the title sequence. See, just let me explain something here. I was going to have all the clips in chronological order, right? I was going to have a clip from video letters to Jason, numbers one and two, then Jason's video letter one, then my three through six, then Terminator letter two, then numbers seven through nine, basically. The problem is the song I'm using is only a minute and a half long, a little less than a minute and a half long. It's, it would take a lot of serious time management in order to cram all those clips into a minute and a half. I mean, the first clip alone took about 10 seconds, you know. Dateline 3, please. Dateline 3. Why does that always come on whenever I'm filming? It rarely comes on when I'm not filming, but whenever I am filming something, like now, it comes on. Go figure, right? Anyway, uh, so I thought I would show you how I incorporated you into the title sequence. I was thinking I'm going to do this, I'm just going to film various things and then uh, do a voiceover. So I'll just, I'll intro it here, I'll just tell you the first uh, first couple of steps. Well first, of course, I have your original tape which you sent me of uh, the video letter. And I went through it to find a clip that I wanted, and I chose this one of you sitting in the car. First thing I do is dub the clip from the VHS tape to 8mm, because with the 8mm I can go through it a frame at a time, eh? As you as you should know by now, because I've shown you the editor enough times. And uh, besides, I'm sure you've worked with editors before anyway. Or, well, you've seen the one at your work anyway, or your uncle's place, so I'm sure you're more than familiar with it. Anyway, of course, that allows you to put it in, do it a frame at a time. And uh, as I demonstrated with the frame grabber earlier, you have to put each frame of the particular sequence in separately. Like, in, or not separately, but individually. You have to do it a frame at a time. I decided I'm going to do it with the condensed picture format in low resolution in black and white. Now I looked, and there really isn't much difference between low res and high res with the frame grabber. Just slightly, uh, slightly less sharp of a picture, but it's not really majorly noticeable. I mean, it's still uh, quite good. See, the problem I was having was uh, I did the black and white high resolution one that you saw in the uh, on the first tape. And that was great. I mean, it was excellent quality. I showed it to a bunch of my friends and they were all just amazed at how high quality that was, like how nice it looked. The only problem was, because it was in such high resolution, it wouldn't play it back at normal speed. It played it a lot slower, as I'm sure you noticed when I showed it to you. When I, you know, the black and white one where I videotaped the screen. Yeah. The reason I did that was because I was running out of time and I didn't have enough time to patch it right into the VCR. Well, that version of that clip no longer exists. <laughs> because I redid it today in low resolution. only took about an hour or two, and I did 40 more frames than I had done previously, so actually a little less, 38 more. So it's 178 frames for the whole sequence now. Like, it's two frames less than six seconds if it was playing at full speed. It's still a little slow, but because I put it in low resolution, it increased the speed dramatically. I mean, it's almost perfect, like dead on, real time. Yeah, so the first thing I do is I dub it onto 8mm, and then I go into the frame grabber, which I have on the screen here. Uh, I'm using this here, which you can't use. You, well, here I'll uh, just give you a quick look at it here. There, that's more or less centered. Okay, well here uh, you just have your video input. This is, uh, okay, you can't read it too well. This is your intensity. This basically uh, takes care of the brightness. Like, uh, this way is all the way up, that way is all the way down. You might see a little white uh, marker there. See it? Right there. Okay, anyway. Uh, this is your hue, and this is your uh, hue is the same kind of thing as hue on TV. 
and saturation is for uh, how bold the colors will be if you're using a color format. And hue is basically uh, one way is red, the other way is green. Uh, for black and white, the only one we use is intensity. So that's all we have to worry about. And um, I find for the best pictures, it's best to have it, uh, if not all the way up, at least close to all the way up. So I'm going to try it with all the way up with yours. Uh, we'll take a look here. So okay, uh, I'm going to start the voiceover now. And then uh, I'll talk to you again later. Oh, by the way, the weather today is beautiful. It was beautiful yesterday. Sunny, warm. It's a little windy today, but who cares? At least it's nice out, you know. Uh, two days prior to that, it was pretty crappy. <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was cold. It was icy. Then the snow melted. The snow is completely gone now, and it's starting to dry up now nicely. And also, I saw some grass today. Like grass is growing now. Nice green grass instead of this brown dead stuff. You know, it's great. So anyway, here's the voiceover. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few clips uh, with accompanying uh, uh, narration by yours truly. And I'll talk to you again later. Okay? Goodbye. Greetings everyone, Sean from the future here. So we're going to check out how the frame grabber works and just how complicated it was to get video clips into the computer in 1992. So this, of course, is just a still frame from the original. Uh, we go into the settings here and we select half, which uh, if you watched my typical day video, you'll you'll know why. If not, go watch it. It's awesome. Uh, set the max frames to zero. Turn the alarm tone off so it doesn't beep after capturing every single frame. Now, the reason I set the frames to zero is so that uh, basically I can just manually do each frame rather than having to do it automatically. I'd like to have more direct control. So here uh, I'm adjusting the intensity dial that I was talking about before. Uh, so we go all the way down and all the way up and you just sort of see what some of the different settings look like. So as you can see, capturing analog video tends to be a little dark, so we crank the intensity up. So then you just uh, select the file name and there you go. There is a digitized frame right there, like magic frame grabber magic, if you will. So essentially what I would do is I would just, uh, I forget what the key was, it's like a hot key to uh, digitize a frame, then I would advance a frame on the editor, digitize a frame, advance a frame, digitize a frame, advance a frame, etc, etc, etc. We're just going to speed things up a little bit here. And uh, there we go. So now we've got the full sequence. So I did 180 frames, which runs more or less at 30 frames per second. Um, and then you just click to end the animation or end anim. Anim format was the animation format on the Amiga. And uh, that closes off the file. So then we load it up to play it back. And there you go. So that's the uh, sequence. You may notice it jumps a little bit. Uh, that's because it was taking the video from a non time based corrected source. So that means that it was just taking raw video and sometimes the frames would be a little misaligned. So we take that into Deluxe Paint 3, and there's the file, and I told it not to change to the number of colors of the file, because the number of colors in the file is 16, but I wanted to use the 32 color palette. The problem is, the 16 colors that Frame Grabber chooses are not the same 16 colors that Deluxe Paint chooses for a 16 color grayscale. So the colors are all messed up. So here you can see me uh, very sped up adjusting the palette manually to put it back to the correct grayscale. So there you go. So now it looks proper. Give it another little run there. Make sure it all looks good. Perfect. Okay, good stuff. So next step is to add text. And in this case, I wanted to have a nice little overlay text. Uh, the diamond font was one that I used quite frequently. It was a favorite of mine. So here, because we've got our, we've got our 32 color palette, the first 16 colors are used for the grayscale, the other 16 colors are used for whatever the heck you want. So in this case, because they're not being used for anything else, I can use them for the color of the text. So I picked a nice shade of yellow, just kind of adjust the positioning of the text. I wanted it to be within the video frame, so I had to adjust the uh, spacing a little bit there. And then I just capture that as a brush, and then use a darker color for... Uh, essentially creating a, a shadow because there was no outline feature for the text so you had to kind of fake it <laughs> so I'm creating a darker version of it to put the yellow on top of now the way this would work is uh, you could have two colors selected for the mouse 
So using the left mouse pointer would give you the primary color, which in this case is yellow. Using the right mouse button would give you the secondary color, which in this case was dark gray, almost black. I couldn't do pure black because I wouldn't be able to see it. So I got that, very happy with it, so I grabbed that and delete the other ones, just kind of literally erase them. And then uh, that's that. And you click to tell it how many frames you want it to have the title over the top of the video. Click draw, which is the render function in Deluxe Paint, and it just plops the uh, title on top of every single frame. Just wait for it to finish here. Almost done. There we go. Pretty good. Um, this is sped up a little bit, but that said, this rendered pretty fast, considering it was uh, just using the stock 68,000 7.14 megahertz processor. It did have like 10 megabytes of memory in it, so that definitely helped. That was a lot for back then. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I'm capturing the actual animation sequence, like the video sequence, as a brush. So now it's, I can literally draw with the video clip. And as I move the, move it around, you can see it's moving, right? Like as I move it, so like you hold the mouse button down like you would when you draw anything else. But in this case, it goes through the animation sequence. So we just save that, basically saving it over the capture file because we don't need the capture file anymore. And uh, I think we're loading up, yeah, Jason X titles. So this is the actual full animation sequence that will be the title sequence when it's done. So load that up and we want to put the new uh, video clip into it. So currently we've got 630 frames. So we'll add say 200 frames just to give us a little bit of buffer room there. And we want to start it there. So essentially the, what the idea is, is these clips come in from the side of the screen. So I can't actually, uh, I was just saying which frame to start it on. So we're starting it on frame 620. And we're on the first frame. And then this is the move menu, which basically tells you where you want to move the brush. So in this case, we want to move it 350 pixels or whatever along the X axis. Just do a quick 10 frame count there, just to kind of do a test run it's going to go where we want it to go. Looks good. So we changed the 10 count to 179. So it's a 180 frame sequence, but we've already plopped down the first frame. So we want 179 frames. And then once again, it renders fairly quickly. This is sped up a little bit just for expedience. But um, as I say, I mean, even, even then, the Amiga was really good with video and animation and stuff. It was really one of its strong points. So even with a stock processor, um, it could render pretty darn fast. And off it goes. There we go. So because the brush, uh, the pointer of the brush would always be at the center, you couldn't uh, move it right off the screen, so it would kind of appear part way. So here you can see how it'll be incorporated into the main title sequence. It starts the title. That's another video clip which I did earlier. You can see it comes in from the top right and disappears on the top left. And then here we got the one we just created, which comes in from the bottom left and disappears on the bottom right. And that's it. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how uh, how we would did I would digitize video sequences and in this case incorporate them into the video editor Jason 10 title sequence. And there you have it. That's basically how I, uh, well that's exactly actually how I would do each individual uh, digitized sequence and incorporate it into the titles. So there you go, now you know. Uh, if you have any further questions, by all means let me know, I'll be happy to answer them. So there, I've let you in on a little uh, trade secret there. So in case you were just dying to know how I did that, well now you know. Yeah, I thought you'd find that interesting, yeah. I'll let you in on how I do it. And basically, uh, as for sound, you uh, you should know how I do that by now. I uh, explained it to you in video letter 7. Uh, I just use um, the 8mm machines here that have an audio dub button. So I just patch the music in directly using the audio in on the back, directly from the tape machine to the uh, 8mm deck, and then uh, just dub it right on. Dub it onto the PCM track so I get it in stereo, of course. Stereo rules. I don't know what I'm going to show you next. I guess I'll just I'll wait till I get home uh, tonight. I'm going to date the time. Still April 27th. Here, I'll, uh, there. Still April 27th, 2.22 p.m.
that one sequence of putting you into the titles took about an hour and a half to do. And what you just saw, you saw me doing it as I was putting it in, so you actually got to see the genuine making of that segment there. Basically, I'm just repeating the whole process over and over again for each individual digitized segment, putting the titles on and, uh, you know, animating them. So, so there you go. Pretty neat, eh? It's amazing what this, uh, what this baby can do. Yeah. So anyway, I'll see you when I get home. And until then, uh, have a nice day. I intend to. See you later, thing. Sorry, I got my hand in the strap right now. Okay, there we go. Sorry if I made a bunch of noise in the microphone. I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, the printer's going right now. I thought you might like to hear it. In the meantime, this is the date. And this is the time. I'm staying late because I got some shows to put on. Now, don't you wish your printer could print that fast? Well, I just thought you might like to uh, get a look at that. Just hang on, I'm just waiting for my monitor to come on so I can see how all well in focus everything is. Well, uh, update on the title sequence. I've made it up to the Video Letters to Jason 4 clip. That's actually the third digitized sequence, as well I did the animation of the clock. Now the animation of the clock was all hand drawn, except for the numbers. The numbers I just used one of the fonts. The hands and the clock face I drew. Now originally the rim of the clock was brown. I accidentally used one of the colors that was reserved for the grayscale for the uh, digitized pictures. So when I brought that animation into uh, the full title sequence animation, it uh, turned the rim gray. <laughs> but that's okay, it looks sort of like something out of the Twilight Zone, I thought. Besides, I thought it went with the music well, you know, like the, the music sounds like the kind of music you'd associate with a clock. You know, sort of that dun 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 dun, dun kind of thing. You know, like time ticking away. Actually, the placing of the clock in terms of the music actually went quite well, I thought. Anyway, uh, I won't bore you anymore, so uh, so I update you. I haven't gone home yet, i got a few shows to put on the air. I don't know if you heard me over the printer there or not. I'll get back to you when I get home. Adios. Now, for another digitized sequence, by yours truly. Bye.